Welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. Hi, this is Luis Rosa. Welcome to another episode of On My Way to Wealth. I'm glad you're on the show. I'm glad you're listening. Thank you very much for tuning in. Let's get started. I want to talk to you today about a little hidden secret from the banks. I don't know if this is intentional or not, but it's the 20-year mortgage. For some reason, I just finished going to three major online mortgage portals and not one of them advertised a 20-year mortgage. I don't know why that is. I'm not sure if it's intentional, if it's something that maybe it's just a space thing or maybe just because the 30-year and the 15-year are the most common. I don't know why it is. Maybe one day a banker will tell me the answer. But in the meantime, I just want to let you guys know that there is, in fact, a 20-year mortgage option. A lot of you might not even realize that just because it's very little spoken of and you never even see it. So I did a search on three major online mortgage websites. I also visited two major banks, just clicked on rates, just wanted to see what they had. None of them showed a 20-year mortgage. I don't know why. They show a 30-year mortgage, they show a 15-year mortgage, and then some banks still show an adjustable rate mortgage that is typically amortized over 30 years. So the payments are due over 30 years, but the loan is fixed only for like seven years. So uh, you know, not that popular right now. They used to be more popular back in the days before the 2008 recession. So let me tell you a little bit about mortgages, right? So whether you're buying a house or you already own a house and you have a loan and you want to just refinance, typically you see your lender will give you an option, either a 30-year mortgage or a 15-year mortgage. The 15-year mortgage will save you a lot more interest over time. However, the payment is just really that much more expensive than a 30-year mortgage. So a 15-year mortgage saves you on interest because you're cutting the term in half. You're going from 360 payments over 30 years to 180 payments over 15 years. And typically you would also get a lower rate. So you get the benefit of a shorter term and also a better interest rate at the very same time, which is great, right? So if you could afford it, that may in fact be a better option for you. Then the 30-year mortgage is the more traditionally known, the most common. People just buy a house, refinance a house, They amortize it over 30 years, 360 equal payments on the loan itself, obviously not including property taxes and insurance. The loan itself is fixed. But when I compare a 15-year and a 30-year, the difference in amount of interest that you pay over time is quite significant. But then again, so is the payment. So I was recently talking to a client of mine that is about to purchase a home, and they were looking at houses somewhere in the $250,000 range. I'm in Las Vegas. You still could buy a house for $250,000 a year which is great. I know some other areas in the country, you can even touch uh, more than maybe half a million, even more, right? But let me just give you a scenario, right? So $250,000 home that we're putting 20% down, the loan amount is $200,000. So when I ran the numbers, I would just, you know, wanted to give them some options so that they know what they can afford, uh, what to expect as far as mortgage payments, et cetera, and then make a decision from there based on their circumstances. So the $200,000 mortgage at 3.5%, which is what their current mortgage broker was saying that more or less they can get, the payment for principal and interest was $898.09. Now, I want to emphasize that's just the loan repayment. That is $898.09 for a $200,000 mortgage over a 30-year period. That does not include property taxes does not include homeowner's insurance. It doesn't include homeowner's association or anything like that that will be related to the home. But I want to keep it simple here for the purposes of comparing one mortgage to the other. So the loan itself was $898.09. Over the life of that loan, so when I calculate over 30 years, how much they would have paid in interest in addition to that $200,000 that they originally borrowed, it was $123,000, 312 dollars 18 So $123,000 in interest. That's more than half their original loan amount of $200,000, which sounds insane, right? 
Now we say, well, if you don't want to pay that much in interest, let's look at all the loan options. So we looked at the 15-year mortgage. 15-year mortgage was a payment of $1,429.77. Now, when you compare that to $898.09, we're talking about a significant monthly difference. You know, it's $531.68. That is pretty steep when you take a look at it, right? Now, obviously, you get the benefit of the fact that you're going to cut the loan amount uh, time frame to pay it back in half. And also, when you take into account the total interest that they would have paid over the life of the loan was $57,357.71 compared to $123,000 in interest that would have been paid on that 30-year mortgage. So that is quite a significant bit of savings when you take it into account. It's about $65,954 less in interest over the life of the loan, which is great, but it comes at a cost of $531 extra in that monthly payment. So when I'm talking to people and I'm comparing 30 and 15 year mortgage, that significant payment, as you see here, could be pretty significant, right? And and it's only, uh, this is just a $200,000 mortgage. So imagine what it would be like in other areas where you'll be borrowing more like $400,000. The the payment shock is insane. So I always tell people, you have an option. You can still get the 30 year mortgage and send extra principal payments as you can. But at least you know that if you're sending principal payments extra above and beyond what you need to pay for the minimum, at least you know that you don't have to. So if something comes up one month and you can't make that extra payment, you don't have to. Because if you lock into a 15-year mortgage, that that same monthly payment is going to be due every month no matter what. You can send them an extra $5,000 this month and next month something comes up, that minimum payment still due. So I'm a big fan of having cash flow and a bigger emergency savings and having options instead of locking yourself into something that might get you in trouble later. So then I said, you know what, how about the 20-year mortgage, which is what prompted me to write this, uh, do this podcast and write the blog. They were like, what do you mean 20-year mortgage? And I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> you can get a 20-year mortgage. And they're like, I've, we've never known that before. I, I'm like, Really? Um, so I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's not that common, but I'm like, yeah, it exists and, and banks do it often. All you have to do is just ask. Right. And they were like, wow, like we we're working with a broker and I have not been even given that option. It was just 30 or 15. So then I went on three major online mortgage websites and it's exactly what they were saying as well. The 20 year mortgage, which is not mentioned whatsoever. I was like, that is very interesting. Went to two major banks' websites, no sign of the 20-year mortgage. I'm like, all right, well, (laughs) I see what you're saying, but I'm like, it does exist. So make sure that next time you speak to your mortgage broker that you mention, hey, show me what a 20-year mortgage would be because we might be interested in that option. So I ran the numbers for them on a 20-year mortgage for the same loan amount, 200,000. And I kept the interest rate the same. It might be a little lower than the 30-year because typically the shorter term you choose the lower the interest rate the bank will give you. So I wanted to just keep the payment, the interest rate the same just so that I can compare uh, so that the only variable was the term. So 30 versus 20 versus 15. So I ran the numbers on a $200,000 mortgage for 20 years, which is 240 months. And the payment was $1,159.92. When we compared that to their original payment on the 30-year mortgage, eight ninety eight oh nine. dollars it wasn't that much of a difference. It was only $261.83, which they felt comfortable with. Like, you know, this is actually doable. And you knock off 10 years of your loan. And then when I looked at the amount of interest that they would have paid over the life of that loan was $78,380.66. So if you recall, the 30-year was $123,000 versus 78,000. So it was about $44,000 difference. Now, when I compare the 20 year and the 30 and the 15 year, excuse me, the interest paid on the 15 year over the life of the loan was 57,000. However, on the 20 year was only 78,380 in comparison. So it was $21,000 extra in interest over the life of the loan, which obviously is a big amount, but it's not as much as one would think. And the minimum, the payment difference between 
the 20 year and the 15 year wasn't that drastic. You know, it was kind of like right in between. It was like $261 between the 30 year and the 20 year versus that $531 difference between the 15 and the, and the uh, 30. So if you are out there looking to purchase a home, I would encourage you to at least mention to your banker or your broker that you want to compare the 20 year option as well. If you own a home already and you have a mortgage, think about how rates have gone down so much in this era now. You might be able to take advantage of that fact and refinance your mortgage. So let's say you bought your house just a few years ago, maybe three, four years ago, did a traditional 30 year mortgage. Now rates are so low that you might be able to refinance and not only shorten the term, but lower your payments perhaps, or maybe even keep them just close to what your original payments were, but then cut off a whole bunch of years. So if you bought, say, four years ago on a 30-year mortgage, you have 26 years left, you might be able to get yourself into a 20-year mortgage. And and maybe the payment's a little lower, maybe it's about the same, but you just knocked off a significant amount of years from your loan, say six years in this case, and you're going to save interest over the life of the loan. So definitely something to compare. So um, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. So whether you're using a mortgage banker, a mortgage broker, direct lender, whatever it is that you're using, even if they haven't given you that option, it doesn't mean that the option doesn't exist. They very likely do that 20-year mortgage. So be sure to ask. If they don't, then I would recommend that you then shop it around and ask another lender or broker for that 20-year option because it does exist. It's not very hard to do. I mean, they're going to do the very same exact amount of work that they normally would on a 30 or a 15. But for some reason, it's typically not that well known of, not advertised, and it's not put out there. So keep that in mind. You can save a significant amount of money. The 20-year option is actually a pretty good deal because it's not that much more expensive necessarily, depending on your loan amount from a 30-year, but it cuts a significant amount of interest. Uh, and then when you compare it to the 15-year option, not that much of a payment shock. And it's not like you're giving up that much interest when you compare the, uh, if you go straight to the 15 versus the 20. So it might be the happy medium. And think about about it this way. If you get a 20-year option and you decide, you know what, I still want to pay it back even sooner, you always have the option of sending extra principal payments down the line and cutting it down from 20 to 15 anyway. But at least you're not locked into that huge price that the 15-year comes with. So I'm all about options here. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Be sure to stay tuned. Every Wednesday, I drop a new episode. You can go to onmywaytowealth.com and read the blog and find these these, uh, podcasts on all major podcasting platforms. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Luis Rosa. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at louise at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.